Hey everybody, it's Sarah for Chroma Yachty. Welcome to my channel. And today we're gonna to be making some coasters. I'm gonna go through my entire process step by step so you can make your own at home. These are some of the supplies that you're gonna need. I'll put links to everything in the description below. I'm not gonna go through every single item because you're gonna see me use every single item and I'll talk about them as we go. So let's get started. So I started making coasters a couple months ago because I decided to start selling my artwork at in-person markets. It's always good to have a variety of items to sell at different price points. So I have been making a lot of these lately and I surprisingly love them a whole lot. They're like teeny little paintings. So far, I have only really done these round uh, ceramic coasters that you can get on Amazon. I have looked into doing square ones and just buying tiles at my local hardware store, but what I found was the quality of those was not very good. The edges were really uneven. Um, I, I just really didn't like the weight and feel of them. These are really nice and honestly pretty comparable when it comes to the pricing. Plus they already come with the cork backs cut for you. Um, now they do not fill up the entire back, so I had to work out a system for kind of covering this back edge, but I'll show you that later, so don't worry about that. So the technique that I'm gonna do on these today is actually just kind of like a press and flip kind of technique. You don't really see a whole lot of videos on this, I feel like. Um, it's, it's definitely a more simple technique, but what it will do is really give you this beautiful blend of all of your colors, and it's pretty simple, so anybody can do it. So I'm gonna start with a silicone mat, and I'm gonna just then put my paint down in kind of a sporadic way so that you get kind of a good balance of all the colors. We're gonna pop the coaster down, pull it up, and we'll see what we get. So my paint today is a pretty thin consistency, uh, almost like a Dutch pour. I'm gonna start by, like I said, just blobbing a lot of my color down. I'm gonna kind of keep it to the size and shape of my coaster so I don't waste too much extra paint. All right, so I've got just about the right amount of paint sitting there. You wanna make sure it's, there's a little bit more than the exact size of your coaster because for this technique, you wanna be able the paint to come around the sides of your coaster too. So now we're just going to plop, press, and then very gingerly pull it back up. I'm pressing down just enough so I can kinda of see the paint coming up around the edges. Look how pretty that is. So now I'm gonna set it on my conduit piping. Use my handy dandy palette knife. And then you just wanna kinda go around the edges and pull down the pattern a little bit so they're all fully covered. Another reason why I really like using these coasters is they, um, they dry super fast. So I can make a lot of them in even just like a week's time frame. They usually take maybe only a couple hours to dry. So then they're usually ready to put a coat of resin on um, within another day. So my edges are all cleaned up. And then now you just wanna make sure you really kind of scraped along the bottom. Depending on the style of pour art you're gonna do on top of your coasters, you're gonna get a lot of paint on the bottom. Just make sure it's kind of smoothed out. So we'll cover that up later. Okay. So that one's done, I'm gonna make a couple more. So this next one, I'm just gonna to go to the area right next to it so I don't waste too much paint. The reason why I don't wanna go right back into the same area where I just was is I've just, through trial and error, noticed if you do that too many times, the colors get too blended and you don't see like nice defined little pockets of color. You end up just kind of getting this smeary mess. So I'm gonna kind of use what's partially there but I'm gonna to add to it over here. All 
So if you're noticing that the paint isn't going all the way up to your edges, I'm just gonna use this palette knife right here, pull it up now, while the colors are gonna match. So I made my set of four coasters and also have been making ornaments for my Christmas markets and I had so much extra paint that I decided to plop a couple of those in there. It's a great way to keep using your supplies. I get these on Etsy and I'll put the link in the description below of where I get them in case you want to make your own but they're super easy to use and great. And also one of the beauties of using the silicone mat is I'm just going to let this dry out and I'll have some skins that I can use for some future projects. In the past, I've also just scraped all the paint into a cup and let that paint be whatever magical color it decides it wants to be. You can honestly get some pretty interesting colors out of it. So make sure you reuse that paint. Don't let it go to waste. So after you make your coasters with your paint, you're gonna let them dry for at least a day or so before you touch them. Obviously, just like anything else, if it looks wet, don't touch it. Uh, you then wanna kinda look at your edges and touch up any areas that you feel like just need a little touch up. These I made a few days ago and they've already been touched up. So the next step is resin. You wanna make sure they're fully protected from heat, or scratches or anything like that. So you don't want to just give people coasters that have been painted and hope for the best because that paint's going to eventually scratch off. This is the brand of resin that I use. I use this brand specifically because it says it's non-toxic and resin can be really scary stuff to mess with. And I still always wear a mask, even though it says it's non-toxic. Why wear a mask regardless? Uh, because it does have a slight smell to it. So my guess is it's probably not that great to breathe in. So protect yourself, get a good mask. So before I put resin on these coasters, you do want to protect the backs from the resin drips. You know, gravity is going to pull that resin down and it's going to leave little drips hanging. Um, and those are going to be a big pain in the butt to sand off. So what I do to avoid that is I use contact shelving paper. You can get this anywhere. Um, I also get it from Amazon. <laughs> you can't tell I love Amazon because they just bring it straight to my house. So what I do is I lay the coasters down, I trace them, cut them out, and then I have these circles, the exact size and shape I need, and then you just peel off the back and just stick them on. not matter what your contact paper looks like you can use literally anything you're just it's just protecting the back of the coaster from the resin you're gonna peel it off later usually there's a little bit of trimming that needs to be done to get it the right exact size so I trim them I'm gonna do that to all four coasters and then I'll mix my resin and we'll do that part. So resin is mixed in two parts. You have a resin and you have a hardener and they need to be equal parts. For one set of coasters, I'm probably gonna make sure I have two ounces of resin and two ounces of hardener. Any resin that you use comes with instructions. They'll tell you the exact ratios per inch uh, that you're trying to cover. But this should be just right for what I'm doing. Then you just mix it up. Now that our resin's mixed, we're just going to pour it on to each coaster individually. You will have lots of air bubbles. So using a blowtorch is very helpful in this scenario and things will definitely get sticky. You're gonna wanna make sure you're wearing gloves and I like to also have some disinfectant wipes handy. That's gonna make cleanup and everything less sticky. So 
So once your resin has been poured and you've gotten all your bubbles out, uh, the way I like to protect mine is to just save old Amazon boxes and put them on top. You know, I got plenty of those laying around. And that way it's gonna keep out any dust or bugs or hair floating around. That way you don't get anything stuck in your coasters. So this set has already been resin. I wasn't kidding when I said I make a lot of these. And as you can see, the resin dripped down. And if you, we didn't have this backing on here, it'd be a pain in the butt to sand that down. But instead, because you were smart and you listened to me, you put that backing on there, we're just going to heat it up with a heat gun and peel it off. Easy peasy. All right, so once you take all the contact paper off, as you can see, this looks kind of messy. So what I do next is I just take the darkest color paint that I used on the coaster, and then I just paint over top of this. You know, you only need to go in like that much wherever your coaster backing doesn't cover. Um, so I just paint that. And then I actually have a personalized stamp that I've made for my business. Um, so then I just stamp all the back of the cork backings, peel off the back, put it on, and you're good to go. You've made some coasters. I hope you guys found this video to be helpful and you make many, many coasters to share with the world. If you like this style of video, please comment below. I know I'm not on camera explaining everything step by step for every video. Um, it can be quite difficult to do in my house. I do have three young children, so it's it's hard to find the time to be on camera and for it to be quiet in here. Um, but if you like this style video where I'm talking through everything, please let me know below. And as always, please also like and subscribe. I appreciate you all so much. Thank you for all your wonderful comments and have a great day.